Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let us join in the call to worship. We cry to you, O Lord, from the back of the line, from the edge of the crowd, from the corner of the room. Your faithfulness is great. Your grace is enough. Let us join in our opening hymn today, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, number 452. Our Psalter this morning, number 850, Psalm 133. it is when we live together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. By your everlasting love. Please stand for the Gloria. 
seated. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 21 through 28. May we hear the inspired word of God. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon but he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us now join in our affirmation, number 888. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved.
where we say prayers for the people. Um, we also acknowledge if there's any birthdays or anniversaries. And somebody tried to get away from me on his birthday, but yesterday was Dave Campo's birthday, and it was a milestone birthday. So happy birthday, Dave. Um, Jerry's not here, today's his birthday, maybe he's celebrating and I don't know. <laughs> also, my father has uh, a birthday coming up this week, and he probably can't hear me anyway, so I can tell you he's gonna be 91 this week. So, <laughs> uh, is there any other birthdays or anniversaries that you wanna bring forward? Okay. Um, prayers for the people of Hawaii, uh, for Carol Russ, for Lisa Briggs, for Shirley Wolcott, uh, for Ann Smith, who I understand is coming along very well and is out walking by herself, so she's coming along very, very well. Uh, Kevin Miller, David Lane, Laura Eames, William Givens, Darcy Cross, Bob Dick, Dana Wilson, Doug Bailey, Tracy Collins, Kay Canning, Kay Earl, Nancy Breen, the family of Ted Collins, and the family of Audrey Wotas. Anyone else you'd like to add to this? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you give to us every day, and we ask that you will watch over the people that we have mentioned. In your name we pray. Amen. O God of grace, you invite us to draw near and embrace the circle of your love. We come in anguish at our broken relationships, our alienation from one another, our resistance to reconciliation, our readiness to be the blind following the blind, and our readiness to give up when persistence is called for. O Lord, gather us in and make us a place to heal our anguish, ease our alienation, and end our resistance. Ready us for reconciliation, forbearance, and persistence. And let us turn our gaze to the one who always calls our name. This we pray in the name of him who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we would ask if you have any announcements in addition to those in the bulletin. Okay. False we're alarm. We're going to start our men's club this year. We're going to start it September 12th on a Tuesday night at 5.30. Covered this supper. And our guest speaker will be Matt Ertz from Madison County uh, Historical Society, and uh, he will be talking on Madison County on families from World War I, World War II, special stories. And we will like you to know that the wives are invited and the widows. And we hope to have a good turnout, get started. And I hope you come in here, Matt. It's, I have seen and heard this thing, and it's very good. 
and I shouldn't tell you this, but I found out he's earned over $2,000 on the book so far, selling it, and he's not kept a cent of it. He's donated it all to Madison County Veterans Association. That's the kind of man he is, so let's hope we can get a good turnout for men's club. At this time, we ask our ushers to receive our offering. Let us pray together our offering prayer this morning. O bountiful God, you are the source of all good things. When our dreams are your dreams, God, the world is truly blessed. Accept these gifts as a pledge to work and live your dream that all may live together in unity. Amen. Please remain seated for our second hymn today, number 262. Let us pray. O Lord, we pray at this time for Barb that you would be the great physician to her. Reach out with your hands and heal her. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are told that in the old days out west, ranchers would sometimes take a wild steed that they could not break, and they would tie it to a little burrow and turn the two loose. The steed would rear up on its hind legs, snorting, defiant, and off they would go, out into the range. Before long, the bucking steed would disappear over the desert horizon, dragging the burrow behind. Days would pass, but eventually the odd couple would reappear. The little burrow would come first, with a submissive steed in tow. What went out on the range always brought the same result. The steed could buck and pitch and pull, but the burrow, willing or not, would always hang on. Finally, the steed would become exhausted, and at that point, the burrow would take over and become the leader. That's the way it is in life. 
Those who are determined and committed always hang on. They know that perseverance can bring surprising and satisfying results. Today, the theme of persistent faithfulness and the grace to be found therein is most compelling. Persistence has never been my long suit. Part of that reason, I suppose, is that I am too involved in a culture whose motto is, I want mine, and I want it right now. We have allowed ourselves to be beguiled into believing that instant results and instant gratification is our birthright. Regardless of what it is, if we can't have it right away, we will quickly lose interest and focus our attention somewhere else. But I think my problem with persistence has an even deeper root than that. It might even go back to my teenage years. My mother, faced with the prospect of me moping around the house on a Friday evening, would say, why don't you call that girl Muriel and invite her out to a movie? Muriel was the one who sat in the desk in front of me. I had already asked her out to a movie once and she had turned me down. And I thought, what if she turns me down again? I couldn't bear the thought of hearing her say no a second time. I made some lame excuse, but mother wasn't fooled. Faint heart, she said, never won, fair lady. Your father asked me out five times before I said yes. Hearing about my father's persistence didn't help me to screw up my courage. I resigned myself to a life without Muriel and went to spend the evening with my cousin Bruce, who was always watching TV. I don't report this about myself with any sense of pride or satisfaction. On the contrary, I can see now the many occasions on which I missed out on the grace that was available to me because I did not persist in seeking it out. There is ample evidence in the Bible to show that grace isn't always instantaneous, that in order for grace to be experienced, someone has to hang in, somebody has to keep keeping on. God has to hang in and so do we if grace is to be part of our life. It was W.C. Field who once gave this advice, if at first you don't succeed, try again, then quit. No use being a damn fool about it. But then there is something essentially foolish about grace, isn't there? Foolishness abounds and so does grace. It is the Canaanite woman who takes my breath away with her persistence. At first ignored by Jesus, then berated by the disciples, then cruelly rejected by Jesus, she still keeps hanging on. If Jesus, in whom she calls him to be, Lord and Son of David, then there is grace to be found through him, and she will not leave without it. Can't you just hear her friends when she tells them that she's planning to ask Jesus to help her daughter? What good can he do for you? He's only a Jew. What makes you think that a Jew would listen to you anyway? You know how they feel about us. The arguments are persuasive, but not graceful. Grace will be found only if the woman persists. And it is found in experience, not only by the woman, but by Jesus as well. In commenting on the woman's response to Jesus, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs, Herbert O'Driscoll says, the effect on a wary, unresponsive Jesus is electric. Her replay releases in him all the wells of compassion, all the healing that there can be. He becomes who he really is, Beyond weariness, beyond limitations, the hidden Lord shines in and from the man. And the instrument of God to achieve this is a foreigner and a woman. She has become the channel of grace to him to whom millions look for grace today. I believe it goes without saying that we need God to hang in with us if we are to experience grace but it is no less true that we need to hang in with God, to persist in faithfulness until the channels of grace 
are indeed opened. I would say to you this morning, keep on keeping on. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, number 383, verses 1 through 4. And now let us pray together the benediction. Come out from the back of the line. Come out from the edge of the crowd. Come out from the corner of the room. Embrace others and be embraced. Not the least, the last, and the lost may come out of the shadows and live in the light. Embrace the world and be embraced. Amen.